All right, now that we understand that transmitters are released in quanta and that calcium causes the release, we need to understand what the quantas are. The insight that the quanta measured by cats were coming from the release of neurotransmitters through vesicles became pretty apparent with studies using electron microscopy. In the mid-1950s, electron micrographs of the presynaptic terminal revealed that presynaptic terminals were filled with what they called vesicular appearing bodies. With these images, Katz put forward the hypothesis that these small vesicles are the quanta that upon release cause the miniature end plate potentials. Subsequent studies have then shown that vesicles indeed contain neurotransmitters such as acetylcholine. To support the hypothesis from Katz, Pioneering research using the electron microscopy technology was made by John Huser and Thomas Rees. In their 1979 paper, the team provided experimental evidence that the quanta were indeed vesicles, and they also showed images of exocytosis at the neuromuscular junction of frogs. To capture the exocytosis process, as you can see on the right, the team performed a technique called freeze fracturing electron microscopy. In a nutshell, Freeze fracture electron microscopy allows the experimenter to visualize features of the cell membrane by seeing the distribution of proteins in the membrane. To do so, the cell is first frozen and then fractured. Here, the fracture essentially splits the phospholipid bilayer in two halves by using a sharp microtome knife. In terms of freeze fracture terminology, the lipid layer near the cytoplasmic region, as viewed from the hydrophobic tails, is named the P phase. After cleavage, the surface is shadowed with a platinum film, which produces a replica of the surface. The replica is then coated with carbon to increase its stability. After the membranous tissue is dissolved from the replica, the replica can be imaged in the transmission electron microscope. The subsequent image captured by the microscope is what you see on the right. To make sure they would be able to visualize the vesicles fusing, the team applied the drug 4-aminopyridine, or 4-AP, as abbreviated in their description. This drug is essentially a voltage-gated potassium channel blocker, and as you know, blocking voltage-gated potassium channels will reduce the repolarization and thus increase the calcium influx, which allows them to increase the probability that vesicles will fuse. In Reese and users' actual protocol, there are obviously a lot more steps in between, but the general guidelines of what they did to get these images follow what I just explained. In these electron micrographs, you can directly see the p-face of the presynaptic motor nerve. In the first image, the first panel corresponds to a quick frozen control. The second panel corresponds to a freeze image made 5 milliseconds after stimulation. As you can see in the second panel, there are deformations in the membrane immediately after synaptic activity. The team proposed that these were vesicles undergoing exocytosis. The small dots around are thought to be voltage-gated calcium channels. To prove that the electrophysiological quanta that we know as miniature end plate potentials are indeed caused by the fusion of one vesicle, the team tried correlating the number of observed vesicles fusing with the elicited response at the postsynaptic cell. Indeed, as they were freeze fracturing the presynaptic terminal, they were also recording the postsynaptic potential in parallel as neurotransmitters were released. In this figure, the y-axis corresponds to the number of vesicles in the act of fusion that they counted, and on the x-axis, the theoretical amount of vesicles that should have been released to produce the response they recorded. As you can see, as the 4-AP concentration increases and more transmitters are released, the relation between the x and y axis is linear and entails that a vesicle is pretty much equivalent to one quanta. In all, this provides strong evidence that transmitters are indeed released through exocytosis and the quanta as measured by cats are vesicles filled with a somewhat constant amount of neurotransmitters. In an earlier paper in 1973, User and Rees were able to show experimentally, again at the neuromuscular junction of frogs, that the vesicles are recycled by endocytosis. An important question for them to answer was under constant stimulation and presumably fusion of the membrane, how can the presynaptic terminal keep a constant surface area if the vesicle's area adds onto it? To demonstrate that the extra membrane is recycled through endocytosis, the team filled the synaptic cleft with horseradish peroxidase, also abbreviated as HRP. 
HRP is an enzyme that produces a dense reaction that can be visible with an electron microscope as this black dense material. These images can be a bit confusing though, because of the fact that mitochondria also appears black in electron micrographs here shown in blue. Anyway, as you can see in figure 20, when the terminal was soaked in HRP for 30 minutes, the compound surrounded the terminal and the scientists were even able to capture a synaptic vesicle with HRP in it here shown by the green arrow. In figure 21, the terminal was stimulated for a minute and caused HRP to enter structures now known as endosomes. Here again, the scientists only saw one vesicle filled with HRP. The scientists now performed a stimulation for 2 and 15 minutes on different terminals and you can see the results in figure 25 and 26. The pictures are not too different from the previous experiments except from the fact that there are more endosomes and vesicles filled with HRP. Now, it gets more interesting at figure 27 where recent users stimulated the terminal for 15 minutes, rested it for 1 hour and washed the extracellular space with any HRP. As you can see, a large number of HRP vesicles now appear in the terminal. As they say, these vesicles presumably come from endosomes. But one thing for sure, these results illustrate and support the idea that, with presynaptic stimulation, the extra membrane added onto the terminal, as a consequence from fusion, is rapidly recycled through endocytosis and allows to subsequently produce new vesicles and maintain the vesicle population without depleting the stocks too quickly. From these two papers of User and Reese, along with the precedent work made by Bernard Katz and other scientists that I've covered such as Rodolfo Linas, it solidified the idea that the quanta are vesicles that are released upon a calcium signal and that after their exocytosis, they are recycled through endocytosis. As time went by and the technology used in biology exponentially grew, many more molecular studies about the proteins involved in the life cycle of a vesicle have allowed scientists to come up with a general model of what the cycle is. Thank you for watching this video. If there was anything unclear or there was a mistake somewhere in the video, make sure to let me know in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, you can consider leaving a like and subscribing to support the channel. On the right, you will see the informational resources that I've used to produce this video. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in our next discussion.